So here's here's the full stop, okay? If there's no conspiracy, if there's any ability to wipe out these doubts in I don't care what generation you are, there's yeah, I think you mentioned last time there was a survey that most people believe 30 whatever percent or something believe there was something else going on. Here's here's the real problem. If if you're the one controlling the dial on this this paper release, this document release. Okay, if you want to narrow the conspiracy to a lane that can be restricted to some kind of realistic semblance of what really happened, then you would release most of it at least right away, not 60 years later. So the question becomes to me, not is it a conspiracy, is how big is it really? If you take 60 years to, to wipe it out, to, to retract it, what is really happening? the wolf mole podcast i am your host the wolf and my sound is very much like a canine that has been lost to the ages with me i also have the bull is here look at him go so proud of you more cowbell please so More proud cowbell. of you like i'm really honestly i'm really proud of you like, proud take of a second me? to congratulate you because on i did it with the intro like, falling apart and stuttering over myself and intro's perfect and with us, we also have Beowulf, the Irish soul and blood coursing through all of our veins. Her music is here playing again. Hello. Yes. Hello again. I'm just a reoccurring guest at this point. Yeah, you're basically a third. Uh, Perma guest. You're, you're a third. Yeah, you're a third host, basically. I like it. Yeah. yeah uh, if I seem like I am frazzled, it's because I am. Uh, we just spent about 25 minutes trying to figure out why a cord was making a buzzing sound. For all of you audio engineers and production people out there, you understand the intricacies and the frustrations associated with doing all this properly. So uh, I'm going to take a second to breathe. Breathe. Take a deep breath. Take a sip of your tea. <sighs> Have some good energy today because go. I'm really excited to talk about this. Need good vibes. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, now, if you'd like to support the Wolf and Bull podcast, you can find our content on Instagram. You can also find us on YouTube. Our audio normally comes out on all major listening platforms on Thursdays and then the video on YouTube and Rumble on Fridays. I am resolute in sedating right now that there will be a change in that area. We are going to add more platforms because if any of you listening or watching do not know YouTube has become a authoritarian Puritan company and decided to outlaw people who swear. So we are going to do our best today not to say any bad words. No bad words. You're going to have the beep, the beep ready. I'm just not going to say any bad words. Okay. Yeah. That is, I'm that appreciative is of be, this. There are miracles can happen. Yeah. You know, we don't need a potty mouth. It's unnecessary. We live in a pious day and age where no one swears. And I think that's how it should be. You we know, should be back I, at Plymouth I, do, Rock. I honestly believe that that's kind of an easy thing to do, but I I have had my my temper flared once in a while on this podcast, and sometimes something will slip on out. And you know, I may be wrong, but I don't think I've ever sworn on this podcast. I don't think so. Maybe once or twice. Maybe way yeah, back uh, in the day, but I don't think. I think you're probably right. I'm challenging the listeners to find it. Go listen to every single episode. And Be- see Beowulf has definitely it's- sworn at some point in mm-hmm. life. Maybe not in the podcast. You know, the thing She's- that gets me about it is that it, it's such a just a nonsensical rule. Uh, you've got so many things on YouTube and frankly, a company that's run by Google. Uh, if you didn't know um, and is currently promoting the largest documented recorded database ever of adult material doesn't let people swear on their platform. Well, it doesn't make any sense. The conversations we have are really adult conversations anyway, aren't they? I would think so. That's what we want. We want adult conversations with adults. Yeah. We're not talking to children. We're not speaking like children. Kids don't need to listen to this. They need to be obscured from the world of obscured. They need to be sent away. Sent away. (laughs) You know, I will say, Bale Uh, reminds me of her her grandmother a bit. As far as her swear, oh, that's probably a good thing. It's a very good thing. Yeah. I mean, I, I do call her Saint Nancy once in a while. Yeah, we and both it, make you know, great baked goods and tea. I've heard her swear once, and she was really. She said, and I won't even say the word because I promise. Gosh, well, saying. yeah, probably, no, can't swear. No, she, can't say she, any she swears. Was, she was saying a word that is stands for donkey, mm. and she actually meant it. 
when yeah. she was talking about a donkey. A donkey. Um, yeah. You so do your, uh, your donkey impression, but I can't. I can't do a donkey sure impression. You can. I don't know what From you're talking Shrek. About. Yeah. No, I can't do that. It's uh, it is not allowed. I, if we can't swear, I definitely can't do that. That's cultural appropriation for some reason. What? Um, what? Because yeah. Eddie Murphy? Yeah. Oh my god! Uh, Is that really but, uh, considered that? No, it's no. not. I, I just don't want say. to do a terrible donkey impression, so I'm making things up. But yeah, anyway, yeah. how is everyone doing? How are you, Bull? How are you? Effing fantastic! <laughs> Broken rule. <laughs> Broken. How many? How many? How many of those? How many of those booms? Those vine booms? Are we gonna do today? <laughs> Beowulf. Are you okay? I'm okay. Yeah. Today was a really, you know, Tuesdays in particular. In the work. Tuesdays in the, and Fridays. Tuesdays and Fridays are like crazy in yeah. corporate land. Everybody out there loves to wait till Friday afternoon to throw little daggers at you. And then if you don't get it done by Monday, they mm-hmm. want it done on Tuesday immediately. So right. Tuesdays and Fridays, they are the busiest days of the week. And this particular Tuesday was quite busy, full of lots of fun, exciting things in corporate land. Lots of four letter words were flying. Corporate about. landia. Lots of uh, anti YouTube words were banded, bandered about. Bandered Hope, about. love. Yes, exactly. Mm. No, but I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. Good. And I'm looking forward to uh, talking about the later. topic. And I am looking forward to this topic. Yeah, well, I think I'll jump into the monologue. For those of you we mentioned who are following us and listening to our episodes, in the last episode, we mentioned that we would talk about JFK. Mm-hmm. And today we're going to. So I'm going to jump into the spooky monologue. Let every nation know, whether it wishes us well or ill, that we shall pay any price, bear any burden, meet any hardship, support any friend, oppose any foe to assure the survival and success of liberty. John F. Kennedy. Let us not seek the Republican answer or the Democratic answer, but the right answer. Let us not seek to fix the blame for the past. Let us accept our own responsibility for the future. John F. Kennedy. Today, we need a citizen, uh, a nation of Minutemen, (laughs) citizens who are not only prepared to take arms, but citizens who regard the preservation of freedom as the basic purpose of their daily life and who are willing to consciously work and sacrifice for that freedom. Also, John F. Kennedy. Ask not that the journey be easy. Ask instead that it be worth it. John F. Kennedy. A nation that is afraid to let its people judge the truth and falsehood in an open market is a nation that is afraid of its people. John F. Kennedy. The high office of president has been used to foment a plot to destroy the Americans' freedom. And before I leave office, I must inform the citizens of this plight. John F. Kennedy. I will splinter the CIA into a thousand pieces and scatter it into the winds. John F. Kennedy. I really don't have much to say past those quotes, but I will say the following. John F. Kennedy was an American liberal president. He's credited with ending the 1960s recession, improving the U.S. mental health programs, developing NASA, and supporting African-American civil rights. Those quotes that I just read, despite their lack of context, sound like a right-leaning or middle-of-the-road politician than that of an extremely liberal Democrat. As a libertarian and a constitutionalist, I believe that the government coerces society too much. I believe individuals have the capability to hold themselves accountable. The 35th president of the United States may have agreed with me. He may have agreed with modern conservatives on some things. In fact, I can prove that with his final, this final quote. Those who make peaceful revolution impossible will make violent revolution inevitable. Today, in episode 80 of The Wolf and Bull, we're talking about JFK, the questions surrounding his death, and some of the recent records released last year in December of 2022 from the National Archives. That is literally the end of my monologue, and I'm just going to keep the music going because it is so incredibly good. Well, it is good music, but you know, you can download these, right? You can, 100%. You can actually look all these up and (sighs) read them for yourself, but... How? I want to know who his writer was. Oh, my gosh. Awesome. Every episode. Yeah, well, I, I need to get better with the uh, magic behind the scenes because it's still flowing. It's flowing. It's flowing. It's flowing. It's better than looking down. So what are you talking you about? You great. Very that nice. Was, your monologues are fantastic. They're Thank always, you. They're always good. And this one, quote after quote, in re- uh, the type of quotes that are those that you can remember and repeat and have some weight behind them. Yeah, if, and one of the interesting ones that I'm sure we'll talk about a little later was his uh, "I'll splinter the CIA I into love, a thousand pieces." Yeah, I love that into quote. The yeah. That sounds so, a little bit like he was pissed at the time, and I don't think he wrote. I think he wrote that one. Yeah. I'm going to borrow that when I 
am confronting someone over email, like I said, on a busy Tuesday Ooh, in the middle of March, I'll say, I will splinter your company to the wind. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Into pieces <laughs> to the wind. That's hilarious. Uh, for those of you interested in reading more about, you know, JFK and his untimely demise, you can find that information at archives.gov slash research slash JFK slash releases 2022. And you can look at that information yourself. Uh, quick disclaimer. If any of this information offends you, if you find any of this sensitive information sensitive to your ears, go listen to our sister podcast, History Out of the Box. They talk about, we talk about Beowulf, I almost said your name, huh? uh, and myself, we talk about JFK's life. We don't talk about the conspiracy surrounding his life. We don't talk about the details of his death. We, spis- well, briefly we do, but we talk more about who he was as an individual. That episode isn't about the conspiracy or conspiracy theories no. around JFK's death. That episode is particularly just all about Jack Kennedy. That was his Whoa. nickname with his family and his life from beginning his to end. His whole life hit was very interesting. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, it was. PT-109 to his father, the bootlegger, to his brothers. Well, his father was more than just a bootlegger. His wow. military. Yeah, a bunch of different know. things. It was wild. He was one of the considered one of the top two or three politicians period mm-hmm. in the country at the time yeah prior to you know jf joseph involved. joseph kennedy just i believe it was joseph, and joseph his older brother. joe kennedy and but yeah joseph was uh, john's older brother as well who passed yeah. away who passed away and uh jfk's military career which i didn't well, know PT about 109 is a great book if you ever want to read mm-hmm. it yeah synopsis of how that went, you know, mm-hmm. how that went. Yeah. So if, you, if, if, if our viewers and listeners, you want to listen to just his life, go ahead and visit history out of the box. We talk about it in great detail. Uh, now, just as a brief disclaimer, before we jump into things, I want to make it absolute that we are going to try our best from making absolute ac- accusations on what actually happened, but we will likely have an opinion or bias. Again, if you are easily offended by this information, please listen to history out of the box on JFK. It's out this week. Just take a listen to it. Um, there should be a regular disclaimer on this. These are these are opinion podcasts. Yes. yes. So we yeah. like to delve into and parse the details of situations. There's also like a them. plethora of information on the internet about mm-hmm. oh, uh, yeah, conspiracy theories really surrounding is. this whole thing. So if you really want to deep dive, uh, you'll keep going and you'll never find the bottom. So well, th- there were a lot Go of ahead. people that did not like the idea of this man becoming president in the first place. Which interests yeah, me because he, after doing that he's the youngest episode, one ever. Right, right but I just First looking Catholic. into some of his I mean, this is again an opinion, but I was like I could see definitely why people would vote for JFK. Mm-hmm. You know, I I'm obviously coming from a time much later than when he was alive and president, but I mean it was seemed obvious to me. I'm like, Oh yeah, this would be a very, very popular he was a president. Extremely sure. charismatic figure. A, right. a lot like I think uh, what happened when Barack Obama started? To That's run. what I could. That was the I mean, only that, thing I could really yeah. compare it to was sort of the celebrity around someone like Barack Obama well, and it, how popular of a candidate he that was. or Abraham Lincoln, who was also well untimely deceased. Yeah, but if that's uh, a word. Lincoln. <laughs> interestingly, Lincoln came from near nothing. Yeah, but right. still well, and I think a big difference between Lincoln, JFK, and someone like Obama is JFK and Obama were around during the time of television, radio, and you know there was that again that celebrity nature to them. They really knew how to well, it, work uh, that kind of angle, especially with you know Hollywood and, and stuff like that, which is obviously interesting very interesting. Side fact is that um, Kennedy was the first president elected in the 1900s that was born in. The 1900s yeah mm. that the end so there was there's it was almost like there was this changing of the guard there was this changing of a generational link which they talk we, we've talked about a lot today with this older generation running the country right now and how that's about to change or it should change or whatever the case may be that was a time and he was he was much more conservative than his uh party yeah. stood for at the time which, he, he cut taxes well which is why why I, I i painted that picture for for anyone listening viewing this it, it was not because i was trying to create an elitist aspect of oh jfk could have been he would have been middle of the road it, it, it what i was trying to say is that comparatively to the parties back then as today he was different He was very different and that gives plenty of people ample reason to um not want him to be in that position so i think that's what's interesting about it now As a quick background, for those of you who do not know, uh, at 12.30 p.m. on Friday, November 22nd, 1963, President John F. Kennedy was assassinated in the city of Dallas, Texas. 
Now, recently, the National Archives released 13,173 documents or thereabouts. The numbers are conflicting from various news sources. I kid you not. It like ranges from like 13,125 to 13,173 to 13,250. Maybe they count some that are redacted, not Maybe. redacted. These information, these documents, uh, the, the data released was from the Warren Commission uh, report and the death of JFK. So prior to this information being released, there were numerous conspiracies and still are surrounding JFK's death. According to Wikipedia, these theories, quote unquote, allege the involvement of the CIA, the mafia, Vice President Lyndon B. Johnson, the Cuban Prime Minister Fidel Castro, the KB, KGB, or some uh, combination of these individuals or entities. Now, former Los Angeles District Attorney Vincent Bogliosi, I think that's how you say his name, Bogliosi? I think so. Um, has even estimated that a total of 42 groups, 82 assassins, and 214 people have been accused at one time or another in various conspiracy scenarios. How he came to that number, I would love to know, because it's quite a lot. Now, in 1964, the Warren Commission concluded that Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone in assassinating Kenny, uh, Kennedy. Now, per Wikipedia, the commission also indicated that the Secretary of State def uh, Dean Rusk, Defense Secretary Robert S. Mac Mac Jesus, these names, McNamara, Treasury Secretary C. Douglas Dillon, Attorney General Robert F. Kennedy, FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover, CIA Director John A. McCone, and Secret Service Chief James J. Rowley each individually reached the same conclusion on the basis of information available to them. So apparently, Oswald uh, acted alone, according to all yeah. these people who were friends. Here's the information that was available to them. This is what we want you to say. Mm -hmm. That's the information that was available to them right then. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's, it's just kind of, it's kind of funny. It, it's like a horse and pony show, uh, or dog and pony show. Is that what the, it's a dog and pony, dog show. and pony show. Um, and granted, I, I wasn't there. I wasn't even alive. I wasn't even a, a twinkle in my, my family's lineage's eye. So I, I clearly have very little context of what actually happened then. Cause I wasn't there. Um, but a lot of people were, and a lot of those people are saying some very interesting things or have said some very interesting things over the years. And invariably, I could say that we're probably never going to find the truth on any of this. I think it's going to be indefinitely just pushed or they'll release only half of it and they'll keep a bunch of secrets. I'm so, sort of surprised that they didn't keep pushing it because didn't this whole well, thing. Well, think about how long ago like, that was. This 60 yeah. years ago. Yep. Yeah. I mean, almost 60 years ago. Yeah. And, you know, a, a lot of the people that were most interested at the time and that may have been involved in the time are all gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and so what's one of the reasons to redact things for 50 years at a time so that people are gone when they're finally released? And when they're released, all you get is non-context. Yep. Non-context and probably a lot of people who just don't, they care, but they don't really care. They don't care. Because here's it's the thing. Not, yeah. We talked about this a little bit on the hot BX yeah. at the History Out of the Box there's a difference between how maybe you and I as millennials, young millennials feel about the JFK assassination, where we understand what a terrible thing the American president was assassinated in front of a bunch of people. And like this horrible thing happened in comparison to our grandparents who were either not there per se, but the people who were there somewhere. or, or somewhere and hearing that you're, you know, this, this huge figure in your life, because regardless of whether you like the president or not, the president, no matter who it is, is always going to be a big figure in your life if you're uh, an American. So yeah. it's this huge, big, crazy thing. It's probably really scary when it happens. You and I haven't anticipated that. You were a very, very, very young person when it happened, Bull. But wait, I, I thought he was. Wait, you were young was, then. He was. There was a time when you were. I young. was young way <laughs> he back. Was then. Very young. You know. You know. You know. Think about is if if it's been sixty years, almost sixty, fifty nine years uh, since this happened. 59 years uh, away from the, the Lincoln assassination. What year was it? I you don't know? No. I don't want to do the math. 1924. Oh. Right? Okay. Yeah, so in, in 1924, what was on everybody's mind? Think about it then. Think about the context of young people, you know, 20 year olds in 1924. You know what they've gone through if they survived at all? One. They went through the Spanish flu and World War One. Yeah, they're like. And they were, they were putting on flapper, sh uh, dancing fla the flapper or whatever yeah. the hell, the, the Charleston. Old flapper girls. It's just they're the, dancing it's, the Charleston just, with their flapper girls. There you go. <laughs> it's like how we feel about 9 11 compared to how young Generation Z feels to 9 11. Like they mm. understand. What a terrible thing, but they also didn't watch it on yeah. TV when they were seven or years old. Or how specifically you and so, I feel about FTX 
to <laughs> prior to the destruction or of the crypto community. Think about how kids, kids, you know, how 20 year olds, 20 years from now are going to be feeling about hearing about the pandemic of 2020 compared to someone like, you know, our siblings who were in high school when that was happening. Right. And missed a couple years. Of it school was before. the worst cold of all time. We're not oh, even, I can't say we're that. We're not even going to go. Sorry. Um, it was, it was a, anyway, it was, it was a, a cold problem. December this it was a cold December. Yes, it it was. was a cold in December. Uh, but yeah, so long. obviously there was a lot of speculation. But I, but I think and, that's, that's real important to talk yeah. about in terms of what you were just mentioning as far as the, you know, the redaction of stuff and the release of information, et cetera. So there's a reason they hold on to this stuff for well, as long as they do. I think, and I'm not going to go crazy on this. I'm just trying to make a point. It's why I think something like the, the Holocaust museum in like Washington DC is so important mm -hmm. because I've personally, I know you've been bull. I've been, I don't think you've been over there, Wolf, but it's it's just a really important thing to have because people forget. They just forget. And it's it's not even of their own fault. It's just it's not on their forefront of their mind. I don't even think something like that so horrible should be on the forefront of your mind all the time. It's just I think these things life, fade. Life, well, life I think, moves I think there's on. a difference. But people don't forget. They just think they'd never be a part of it. That's the problem. It's not it's not a, I don't think it's forgetfulness. I think it's 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 individuals for lack of a better word, deluding themselves into thinking that they would never be either a part of the problem or a victim. That's like with people who who go out late at night and think, oh, I could never be the pro I could never be a victim of a crime or I could I would never have been a part of uh, the uh, order police in the 40s. Never, never right. would. So, have. This, so that's a, that's again, I think you're hitting it very close to home there because it's not about forgetting so much because we read our history. We know mm -hmm. the Revolutionary War happened. Yeah. And we know the circumstances based on our history books and the information you can research how and why it happened. So you tell yourself, oh, that was a long time ago. Things don't happen. We're different. We're different. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing. So if it was released tomorrow, that one of these theories that are on this, these pieces of paper or somebody else's podcast or whatever was true about JFK mm -hmm. and that, you know, there was, you know, helicopters shooting him or whatever the hell we come up with. Doesn't matter what, what we say. Alex if Jones one of these, went back if, in time. Yeah. Exactly. If one of these things comes out to be true, all they'll say is, oh, you know, it was amazing. None of those people are around anymore. And I can't believe we had some bad apples there to, to create this situation. Or I can't believe this government really wanted him gone this bad or that our own government wanted this to happen or the mob well, wanted it to happen, whatever. We'll all create justifications about it would be why a general it happen again it would be a general oopsie just like the last almost three years now have been a general oopsie i mean it's oops oopsie and and look I, obviously there's nothing that can be changed about that I, i'm not like people react the way that they do it's human nature and uh, much like with human nature things don't really change and immediately following jfk's assassination many individuals just like they do with things that happen today speculated that the assassination was part of a larger pr plot um, specifically with like broadcasters speculating that Dallas right wingers were involved. Um, now granted, I had no idea that the Dallas stars hockey team roster lineup of right wingers would have done or thought to have done such a thing, but it's surprised to me that Is they that said that back then. Kind of a semi dad um, joke right there. It was a semi dad joke, like a really bad dad joke. But for those of you who are hockey fans, you're welcome. Now with Jack Ruby killing Oswald, obviously referencing our last episode that leaves plenty of opening for conspiracy theories to run wild and at the time and today they did and still do uh, author mark lane wrote an article titled defense brief for oswald in the national guardians december 19th 1963 issue which supposedly initially sparked conspiracy arguments everywhere thomas buchanan wrote who killed kennedy which was published in may of 1964 being credited as the first book alleging conspiracy conspiracy during the trial of Clay Shaw in 1969, New, or New Orleans District Attorney Jim Garrison reportedly challenged the single bullet theory, claiming that the Zapruder film indicated the, that the fatal shot to Kennedy's head was fired from, quote, the grassy knoll, a small hill that most of our listeners have likely heard of. And in 1979,
signed the U.S. House Select Committee, committee uh, formerly referred to as the HSCA, concurred that Oswald killed Kennedy, but believed that the Warren Commission's report and that the original FBI investigation was seriously flawed. The HSCA believed that it was highly likely that at least four shots were fired, with high probability that two gunmen were, were involved, making conspiracy further probable, based on acoustic evidence, by the way, that was later discredited. Now, according to Wikipedia documents under Section 5 of President John F. Kennedy's Assassination Records Collection Act of 1992 were required to be released within 25 years of the bill's October 26, 1992 effective date. Most of the documents were released, but on October 26, 2017, President Trump set a new deadline exercising a provision of the 1992 Act for October 26 of 2021. Now... In October of 2021, Biden further extended the deadline to December 15th of 2022, citing delays related to the unnamed disease of catastrophe as a cause. Why that would have caused delays in the distribution of digital, digitally rendered documents that I would assume if the CIA, FBI, and the National Archives were actually coherent and effective in their work, would have already uploaded to some sort of database. I'm not sure why that particular disease influenced that decision. COVID was used for any excuse I'm trying to, to avoid delay. saying the name. Religion. <laughs> we're flagged now, guys. <laughs> no, but, uh, yeah. That was used as an excuse by everyone to for put off doing anything. Divock from now on. That's my hot take. Divock? Well, that sounds like a swear word. Now we're also flagged. <laughs> Divock? Divock. Yeah, we're, Divock. we're, we're, we're flagged. Or, or you could say it like you're French. Divoche. 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 What does that mean in French? Are we like saying... Probably another swear word, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably is. Yeah, so uh, it, obviously there are a lot of questions that everyone has. But as previously stated, uh, I want to say it was like 95%, 95% of the documents... Uh, that are released right now um, are on the National Archives website. So the 5% that they are going to release whenever they're going to do a thorough scrub of. Is okay, they've so, so here's here's the full stop, okay? Mm. If there's no conspiracy, if there's any ability to wipe out these doubts in I don't care what generation you are, There's I think you mentioned last time there was a survey that most people believe 30 whatever percent or something believe there was something else going on as of 20 if you want to get rid of all that you 61 percent release it all if you're not releasing it all guess what conspiracy something will else going on yeah For, forget the abound conspiracy it, here's here's the real problem if if you're the one controlling the dial on this this paper release this document release okay if you want to narrow the conspiracy to a lane that it can be restricted to some kind of realistic semblance of what really happened, then you would release most of it at least. Yeah. Right away. Not 30, 70 or 60 years later. So the question becomes to me, not is it a conspiracy, is how big is it really? If you take 60 years to, to wipe it out, to, to retract it, what is really happening? Well, it's like with the, it's like with the uh, Ghislaine Maxwell instances all the inferences of who she knew and what they had like meetings wise and the people she was connected to and who actually went to the Island and all that stuff. We're never going to find out. It'll be released 80 years from now. Or like exactly. with uh, was it Pfizer that said they wanted all the reports and data on uh, their particular medical kept for 50 years, kept for 50 to 70 years or something ridiculous like that. It, it, I guess my, my thing is it, this goes back to what we said last episode and probably every episode we ever had uh, the, People just think we're dumb. Apparently, they just think we're we're dumb, and we can't handle. It's the whole it's the whole Jack Nack Nicholson. You can't handle but the truth. We've, thing. we've proven over you know over and over as a society that we don't care enough about these things to really dig it up. Mm. We care enough to talk about it. I don't know if we don't care. I, I think. Come on, if if a quarter of the things, ten percent of the cons- generalized theory, you know that upside down pyramid you yeah. had last time, and all that conspiracy. I forget sure. which which zone it was in but if if 10 percent of those things are real what the hell Mm -hmm. right and and there was one of those zones in there were things that everybody thought was a conspiracy and was told a conspiracy for years and years and years that actually were true and were documented and found out to be true yeah tuskegee experiment uh mk MK ultra Ultra, all that kind of stuff jesus so how do we not sit around and doubt any of this i'll tell you exactly how just release everything 
Well, the, the, again, tell everybody they, they won't you're do smart it, enough to, they won't do it. to see what's going on here. You're smart enough to know that people make mistakes and people have certain intentions. Do you want to know why they won't do it? It's why? one of JFK's quotes. Country that, uh, what was it? A country oh, that yeah. doesn't, they, I, trust, uh, doesn't trust or fears its people. A country that doesn't trust its people fears its people or something like that. Like that. That's literally why. And it, it's, a. Uh, it's just unfortunate because all it does is it creates further problems for them down the line. It creates problems for people who, you know, a nation that is afraid to let its people judge the truth and falsehood is an open market in an open market is a nation that is afraid of its people, period. Yeah, it's true. And so I, I don't know. I, I just, the, obviously with the lack of answers and with the, the, and, and I, we'll get into it, but I think the real problem is that uh, the Warren commission allowed the FBI and the CIA to do the investigating except their, instead of their own people. I mean, that's really what the problem is, is rather than actually have their own people do it and say, Hey, we found independent evidence. They said, well, you know what? Obviously the, the government institution that is not being really forthcoming about the information is confusing the guns that they found and is providing theories that don't make a lot of sense. They should do all the research and then we'll use them as the example. And that's just pure laziness or uh, forcible covert coercion. One of the two. Um, but yeah, so obviously where there are no questions, conspiracy abounds and there have been anywhere from a thousand, 2000 books, pieces of information, topics well, written I think about this, this is like one of the first that's the biggest quote one. conspiracy theories of the like 20th century, right? Mm -hmm. Like this is the one that doesn't have the full answers yet. Well, that's that the one that has the most gas behind it. it, it over. I think Just you obsessed. hit it earlier. It's, it's during the time period when everything started to be, the information started to come at mm. people very, very quickly compared to what it did in the past. Mm -hmm. If you want to, yeah. if you want to go into conspiracies, talk about the, Archduke Ferdinand. Well, you can go to that like whole thing. Everything you know? yeah. connected to JFK too has a conspiracy theory conspiracy theory attached to that as well. Mm -hmm. Just think about like Jimmy Marilyn Hoffa? Monroe. Marilyn uh, Monroe. Uh, uh, I almost said Jeremy Hoffa. I said Jimmy Hoffa. <laughs> Jimmy, yeah. Jimmy Hoffa. Hoffa. Um, mm -hmm. you, I mean, just the almost Kennedy, any the Kennedy one of the family, family itself. itself. Or any one of the mob bosses associated with the Kennedy and family. Still, and still to this day, the Kennedy family is considered quote american royalty right kind of so i mean i i've heard Kinda. that before i've I mean, heard that before i ever looked into Camelot. anything to, yeah, right Camelot. so it's it's got that sort of allure to it that just what's the answer i don't know well I, I think obsessed. i think the best possible thing for everyone to do um is to play devil's advocate with a lot of this stuff because sometimes i think people go a little bit too far down the rabbit hole and professor of history colin kidd would probably agree with me now he might be a little more cynical than myself but he has described the amateur historians amateur historians of the assassination as quote-unquote buffs writing that the quote study of the kennedy's assassination is now best known to academics as a counterculture which grossly caricatures the best practices of the academy and where extravagant theories tend to trump sound scholarship plausibility and common sense now granted that is coming from an argument to some degree of authority and we have discussed that but with that being said i don't necessarily think that he is wholly incorrect i just think he's coming from his position as an aca academia academician Academ academic academic academician Academic. A comedian. Academic. He's coming. A comedian. <laughs> anyway, he's coming from it from his perspective. So I, I, I totally get where he's coming from. But that's the problem with all this is it tends to just, you know, your favorite doctor wasn't involved in this back then, was he? <laughs> I mean, Fauci is really unbelievably <laughs> old. So I wouldn't surprise <laughs> me sitting there. Oh, clearly, this had to do with the tuberculosis disease. Like, I mean, like, obviously. But yeah, I, I don't know. It's just, it's interesting. I think a lot of the problems here go back to the mishandling of a lot of this. Uh, still, a lot of people believe that Oswald acted alone uh, with recent polls, which I believe Beowulf referenced, uh, such as one in 2013, finding that 61% of Americans believe that other people besides Oswald were involved. Now, on a side note, that is the lowest number since 1963, when a poll conducted by the National Opinion Research Center found that 62% believed others were involved in the assassination compared to 24% who believed Oswald acted alone. And that was in 1963. So for the most part, the numbers have either grown substantially or have kind of remained the same, which mm -hmm. is incredibly fascinating if you think about it from a data perspective. Well, it also, in my mind, it also goes to show you how something like that can have longevity in generational and a generational aspect. Because think about that. There's like, there's so many people under the age of 35 who truly believe that 
you know, JFK was an inside, quote, inside job with the government or that, you know, Hoffa was involved or whatever. I I haven't met very many people that are younger who truly just think it was cut and dry. Oswald did it. So let me ask by Jack you, Ruby, let me ask you blah, blah, blah. If, 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 if that's the case, if six out of 10 Americans and, and probably more than that on younger Americans believe that something happened 60 years ago to this effect, don't you think that taints their view of what happens today? Yes. Well, you would think. Mm-hmm. I would say, okay, if you... 100%. If, and truly, from a personal standpoint, I didn't know anything about the JFK assassination except that this guy shot from a building and killed him. Like, that was the extent the of only, what I knew honestly, until, you're the like, only a person, weeks ago. You're the only person I know that at this age in your life, you did not know about I, these details until I didn't. literally this age. And, like, it, it, it just wasn't a question in my mind about looking into it. Just, I just didn't. Um, so this I, is the damage that Disney does. <laughs> so, <laughs> thinking back on that, if so many people believe this, that means that they think, in most cases... I mean, I know it's like a general conspiracy theory here, but that the government is capable of killing its own top guy. Well, see, this this goes back to what I was talking that's about a last big week. Accusation. There's this this veil of civility. I think that's the way I put it last time too. There's this veil of civility draped across the United States as if it's somehow better. Well, this is also it's just not. Well, no, consider it's, it I mean, this there, way too. There's just as many people in this country willing to do bad stuff. Is there is another country? Well, yes, that's very true. I mean, just consider the corruption that's still alive and well and on its face corruption Look all at what's over happening the place in Brazil. today. Look at what's happening in lots of these uh, middle middle African countries that that are just ripe. With well, I mean, I think just yeah. crazy corruption. But this is also so if you if you are going to go with the idea, the conspiracy theory that somehow the CIA or some top level government agency was. It, heavily involved in the assassination of JFK. JFK's, you know, brother was the attorney general. Like the, this family was seeped in politics. So are we going by the notion that they knew or that they, like all of them were blind to what was going on? If this was actually what was going on, there's just a lot of layers to this that either there was a lot of people playing this game and a lot of people behind it. Or what the Kennedy family was just completely oblivious? Dare we say it was an onion of conspiracy? I'm just saying, I don't really have an opinion one way or the other on what exactly happened. It's just very interesting to me how much detail here doesn't exactly add up in any way. That's all. Yeah, it's very interesting, uh, and obviously, I think there there was a lot of there's a lot of people at that time and today that would agree with you, and they'll probably feel the same way. Um, and then I've probably stated similar things. Uh, U.S. Senate Select Committee on Intelligence member Richard Schweiker quoted that the fatal mistake the Warren Commission made was to not use its own investigators, but instead to rely on the CIA and the FBI personnel, which played directly into the hands of senior intelligence officials who directed the cover up. Schweiker apparently also stated in 1978 that he believed that the Warren Commission was set up at the time to feed pablum to the American public for reasons not yet known, and that one of the biggest cover-ups in the history of our country occurred at that time. Now, I don't know. I mean, maybe he's just a freaking crazy person. Maybe he is. He could just very well be crazy. He very well could be crazy. But to play devil's advocate, Roscoe Drummond claimed in 1966 that if there were a conspiracy to cover up the truth about the assassination, it would have to involve the chief justice, the Republican, Democratic, and non-party members of the commission, the FBI, the CIA, the Secret Service, the distinguished doctors of the armed service, and the White House, a conspiracy so multiple and complex that it would have fallen of its own weight. And to that, I say... You clearly were not alive in 2020. Well, <laughs> it's a whole other route. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Up. No. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, regardless of any 2020 opinions that may be <laughs> held, that that is truly how I felt about it. I'm like, there is a lot of people who had to be involved in this who it's, have mostly stayed quiet. It's all usefulness. It's it, look. There. I know this is going to make me sound really mean. I'm going to sound really mean. But here, here's the problem here. This is all allegiance to either title or group. It's, it's, it's group shift. It's group think. So someone at, someone at the tippy top of the spear, as anything, says something. 
And because of their title, their credibility, their tenure, the years they've been associated with something, people below them, by confirmation bias, or by allegiance, or by friendship group, or whatever you want to say, they listen to what that person says. And then it trickles all the way down the spear or the pyramid or whatever you want to say into the people that would be considered, for lack of a better and nicer term, the useful idiot category, to where they all just do and say and repeat the things that those people do and say without critically thinking about what they're actually doing and saying. That's how it works. And uh, like you can talk about whether or not that's extremely accurate or not, but look at the disinformation dissemination of information over the last like five years every single mainstream media organization on one or both sides says the same freaking thing over and over and over again you can see it in the titles you can see it in how they phrase things you can see it in the things that they do or don't say is that just on accident how about all the people that are po- a, a part of those activist groups they all parrot the same things that's human nature but at the same time it's also We're smart enough to understand how to manipulate human nature. At least I would assume in 2023 that we're smart enough to do that after, you know, uh, 500 years. If they could do it in the the late 30s, then they can do it. Well, well, 500 years of of advancement exponentially in technology. Yeah, of course they can. Yeah. I I mean, there's a lot that goes on behind curtains. Okay. And I I think when when I view something like this, and the, the nature and the finality of making a decision to kill someone that at the time was the most powerful individual in the world, if you believe that that position gives somebody that, that weight, and also a very charismatic, popular person. Mm-hmm. Now, One that and, wasn't partisan. And, and fairly populist as well for as supposed liberal as he was. Actually, let me rephrase yeah. that. One that was slightly less partisan than other ones. They were all, I mean, everybody has their own biases as, as we've always talked about. But the finality of something like that, to make that decision, to have a conspiracy surrounding that, that can be kept quiet over time, I, the, the guy that you just mentioned, it would fall apart on its own weight. Now, that doesn't mean that something can't be it's it's like a it's like a snowball, right? If you roll a snowball from the top of a mountain and there's enough snow on the mountain, it becomes something unbelievable by the time it gets well, down. There. And Even the question there. that you also have to ask is: Does the snow at the very bottom of the mountain know that it's part of a snowball? Exactly. No. It just it gets rolled up in it, right? Yeah. And and the the parts of that snowball, if you don't want the word to ever get out, what do you do to them? Lock them down. What, you ever you ever go online and watch these things about? castles that are, were built or secret tunnels that were built back in europe or in you know southeast asia or all these different is this your places. search history that you're inferring to us huh your search history the castles you look up castle well, secrets I, I always put my search history right on in the bio here for this, oh, this yes. podcast so, yeah. <laughs> so but if you if you read about how those things were created they weren't those things aren't put together and built by the people that own those castles and own those those you know, parliamentary structures and Taj Mahals and all. They were put together by aliens, slaves typically, right? Which everybody for the history of humanity has had, every ethnicity has had them, okay? Let's just be real clear about that. And they were, it was forced labor, one way, shape, or form. Mm-hmm. Truth bomb, mm-hmm. it's there. So, so what, what do you think those, what do you think those people did in, in Egypt after they, you know, built the secretest of the tunnels. What they got happen? sucked up into a UFO and went back to where they came from. They got disappeared for sure. So that's what happens when you cre- want to create secrets. Mm. When you create secrets, you have to get rid of those that you're using to help create those secrets. Yeah. No different with an assassination. Yeah. None. Yeah. Well, uh, unfortunately for those that partook in this, they kind of really didn't do an incredibly good job because there are a lot of problems as everyone who's listening or has read anything about this knows there's a lot of loose ends a lot of things that were not squared away who would have known the most the people who are providing the information the Ariavel would have known the most yes what happened to him uh he accidentally fell on a flight of stairs uh and the basement of the ba- and Dallas fell into a, a barrel of a gun right? yeah yeah exactly. he fell right yeah. into it um on his own volition uh Jack Ruby what happened to a, pull the trigger on accident after being Jack let Ruby in with a gun who? um a nightclub owner mm-hmm. yeah he was 
as nightclub owners do, they venture they after the nightclub into the basement of metro stations, specifically police stations. They just venture in there and uh, with a gun, mm-hmm. let in. And of course, all the police officers were playing golf that day. And uh, that happened. Yeah. Uh, so obviously, there's a lot of stuff that just didn't happen correctly or right, or maybe it did. Who knows? Apparently, there was a wit- there were witness statements that pointed to conspiracy at the time that were completely ignored, according to Richard Byer. A 1992 biography of Gene Hill titled JFK, The Last Dissenting Witness, Bill Sloan claimed the Warren Commission Assistant Counsel Arlen Specter, these names are ridiculous, attempted to humiliate, discredit, and intimidate Hill into changing her story. Now, just for those listening, Gene Hill is known as the lady in uh, the red coat, a lady in red. She was wearing a red coat in the video of the... Uh, oh, the in Zap, the, the Zap, 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 Zapperger? Yeah, Zapperger. Zapruder. Zapruder video. Um, now... Jean Hill also stated that she was abused by Secret Service agents, harassed by the FBI, and received death threats. Um, But yeah, she was there, and that's what she said. And due to the long red weight raincoat that she wore, that's how she came to notoriety. Um, Jim Mars, in his book Crossfire, provided several accounts of people who claimed to have been intimidated by either FBI agents or anonymous individuals into altering or suppressing what they knew regarding the assassination. Texas school book depository employee uh, employee Joe Molina was also apparently intimidated by authorities and lost his job soon after the assassination. Witness Ed Hoffman was warned by an FBI agent that he might get killed, in quotes, if he revealed what he observed in Dealey Plaza on the day of the assassination. Warren Reynolds, a man who claimed he saw the shooter of police officer J.D. Tippett and chased him, was shot in the head in January 1964, two days after first talking to the FBI. He lived and later tested to the Warren Commission that in February of 1964, someone had attempted to kidnap his 10-year-old daughter. Mm-hmm. All of this is supposedly coincidence. Well, th- think about think about what um, underworld figures have done forever when they want to make people keep secrets. How many people do you guys know that's been shot in the head after talking to the police? Uh, 30, 40. Yeah, like personally, a yeah, that makes brutal sense. Brutal question. Well, that's a, it's a legitimate question though, because here's here's the thing that I have for all this, and I'm not trying. I'm, again, I'm not trying to make speculations. I just think a lot of this is very coincidental. This guy talks to the FBI, and then two days later, he gets shot in the head, lives, and then his daughter the next month is attempted kidnapping, and he's the guy that saw the guy that shot the police officer who almost caught Oswald. Really? Mm. Uh, I mean, look, I, it just seems nothing to too say it. coincidental. It's, it's, is my thing. It's just way too coincidental. It's and way too coincidental. Most, and it looks like the CIA would say, it is a coincidence. You're right. Yeah. No, of course they would. Well, isn't, uh, isn't this weird how we always put people into power, into positions, whether we're talking about elected officials in the House that then vote their own salaries every year, mm-hmm. or we talk about CIA and FBI, uh, the heads of them. Most of these people that are part of these organizations are human beings that are just doing whatever job they're told to do. But there's always an echelon of of management if you will that that's there for a lifetime and why is it that we always put these people in charge of not only securing making us secure but also investigating anything that happens anomalous that they may be a part of because how, how do we, we agree with we that trust at all them. We, tr- we, have, we trust them they're here for our help even this independent counsel thing you hear about all the time is never what it seems no yeah, it's uh, it's just silly. But associated with all the the quote unquote weird anomalies, the weird blunders, there's also been supposedly, and obviously I'm going to say supposedly about a lot of this stuff because this is my opinion. This is just me being biased. Um, supposedly, there's also also been a lot of mysterious deaths surrounding all this. Not sure what that really means because there have been a lot of contradictory things, but. Many have claimed that there have been mysterious deaths. People have been assassinated. They've been disappeared. Uh, suspected disappearance are abounding, and no one really knows where it comes from, except Jim Mars. He knows something. I think he does. Because in 1989, he published a list of 103 people that he believed had died, quote, convenient deaths under suspicious circumstances, stating, quote, those deaths certainly would have been convenient for anyone not wishing the truth of the JFK assassination to become public. And in 2013, Richard Belzer published Hit List, an in-depth investigation into the mysterious deaths of witnesses to the JFK assassination, examining the deaths of 50 people linked to the assassination and claiming most of them were murdered as part of a cover-up. Granted, 
just to play devil's advocate, those people could be grifters. They could be. They could be grifters. It's almost certain that it's a certain percentage of them are. Mm-hmm. I would say like 80, but maybe 90% of grifters. But it's almost certain that a certain percentage are not. Like 10 to 5%. doesn't matter the percentage. 10 yeah. to 5% is enough. Well, here's a mysterious disappearance, or actually death, that I'd like to talk about. Uh, Dorothy Kilgallen, unfortunate last name. Uh, a journalist from the newspaper New York Journal American was publicly skeptical of the official version of the assassination of the president of President Kennedy and Jack Ruby's shooting of Oswald. In 1964 and 65, she wrote several articles on the subject. She had a conversation with Jack Ruby when he was seated at his defense table during a recess in his murder trial publishing this exchange on February 2nd, uh, 1964. Now, no one knows whether she had a second conversation with him, but Mark Shaw, one of Kale Gallon's biographers, contends she could have learned sensitive information during a trip she made to New Orleans several weeks before her death. On September 3rd, 1965, Kale Gallon wrote her final brief, ending the publication with, that story isn't going to die as long as there's a real reporter alive, and there are a lot of them alive. On November 8th, 1965, Kilgallen was found dead in her Mon- Manhattan townhouse, her system filled with alcohol and barbiturates. Her husband and son were both present present throughout the night in the townhouse. And that's what people used to point to as evidence that she couldn't have been murdered. And to that, I say, maybe. But then also you could just have a bunch of people show up at your door and hold you at gunpoint. Uh, listen. I think that deserved a bomb. Not to say that this has any correlation that this has any correlation with this, but I know I've told you two about this. Have you ever seen the video that went public of the I believe likely Israeli agents who most likely committed an assassination on this guy in Dubai. Yeah, where there was oh, like yeah. 35 of them that all you know, walked into a hotel. hotel. This was like back in the early 2000s, it was I like believe. A, it was like a conference for all these assassins at the same time. Yeah, yeah and they've kind of... You know, they've kind in, of it, it's been uncovered that it was a sloppy job because everyone was able to figure out what was going on. There was like 25 of them, and these agents, and they were really playing it up in the video. Like there's some guys with tennis rackets in front of the hotel... Long story short, the first time I saw that, I was like, oh my gosh, this this happens, you know? Like, they just they just mm-hmm. do it. So, <laughs> who's to think that somehow America is the most pious, the most honest? We've done more the than most, all the other countries combined, We would never probably. do something like that. Have you ever looked oh, up what, Guant- what happens in Guantanamo Bay? Did you swear? Bay? Guantanamo Bay, I can't pronounce it. Bull, that. did you, that was did just, you swear? That was just a little B-S. That's all it was, a little B S. Anyway, I just thought that was interesting. But think about this. By the way, by the way, pause for a second. Pause. I just want to point this out because this seems to be a theme. Um, Our neighbors are now taking their garbage can again out at 7 p.m. Yeah, they do it every day. Every Tuesday at (laughs) 7 p.m. We need to find a better time to record because apparently Tuesdays at 7 are when we hear the neighbors pulling their garage. It's okay. Garbage cans out. Anyway, funniness aside, how dare you swear? More problems and more work for me. Sadness. That's all you'll have to do right at that point when I... It wasn't... Is that even considered a swear word? It anymore? is. It is? You can't even say You can't even say what would equate to uh, the P word for fecal matter. Okay. I was just going to say fecal matter, but you I mean, fecal fear. matter is the best way to do it. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of there's a lot of weird stuff. But, there really is. What I was going to say though is, but think about this: plausible deniability. Everybody knows what that is. At least I hope everybody knows what that is. But if you have 25 assassins in the same lobby, and somebody that's a target gets assassinated, they're all just going to go boop, 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 pointing at each other. Yeah. That's all they're doing. Yeah, it's like the Spider Man. Well, I know that. I don't. I think that same agency. I'm pretty sure it was Israel who was the one who it got was. in trouble. Um, they got in trouble mostly because they were using forged passports from real people in different countries, mm-hmm. and that those other countries got mad. They're like, "You're blaming this on us." Well, yeah, and it was obvious that they were fake yeah. after the fact. So, but. so that that's the part of what you have to ask yourself with things like this. Okay, if if you're if you're the, if if you are the element in society that created the situation that got Kennedy killed, him or his brother, we could talk about them at a later time, If what would you do to cover it up? 
certainly you would say, hey, let's redact everything. You'd go on a murder spree. Oh, and you would also probably enjoy the fact that people are coming up with wild, the- yeah. wild theories all over the place. Dear God. Yeah. You are We were a just monster. talking about how easy it was not to swear, and you've already You are the only two. one. You're the only one. You know what? You know what's so funny about all this, Bob? I'm absorbing, is years ago, I'm absorbing wolf energy. Y- no, no. Years ago, by the way, karma. Years ago, <laughs> you used to say, I swear too much. YouTube comes Which out with a new rule. Absolutely true. And you're the only one that swears. Truth Do you bombs. Think youth, you think YouTube? YouTube. <laughs> karma. Anyway, you go on a murder spree if you want to hide things. I could be just spreading a little disinformation by probably by swearing a little bit. Yeah, there and well, throw everybody off. Yeah, the well, game. we're getting censored. So anyway, uh, author Jerome Koth would probably agree with me. He thinks mafia figures like Sam Giancana, John Roselli, Carlos Prio, Jimmy Hoffa, Charles Nicoletti, Leo Mosseri, Richard Kane, Salvatore Granello, and Dave Yaris were murdered to prevent them from revealing their knowledge about the JFK assassination. Author Matthew Smith thinks others with some tie to the case who have died suspicious deaths include Lee Bowers, Gary Underhill, William Sullivan, David Ferry, Clay Shaw, George D. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that last name four showgirls who worked for jack ruby and jack ruby himself yeah well, the mobsters probably had a few other reasons that somebody might have off them maybe but the interesting thing is there have been plenty of allegations along with the mysterious deaths and the bungled situation of tampering with evidence now there's been suppression of evidence there's been ignored testimony there's been confiscated film and photographs and withheld documents originally the Sapruder film was considered by many to be quote the best available photographic evidence of the number and timing of the shots that struck the occupants of the presidential limousine with assassination records review board claiming it quote is perhaps the single most important assassination record many conspiracy theorists originally according to Vincent Bugliosi touted that footage as incrunched incru- incontrovertible proof i can't say these words today of conspiracy but now many consider it a sophisticated forgery which is interesting very interesting how the slide of speculation becomes just incomprehensible in some instances because at the end of the day none of it ever happened that's where it goes none of it ever happened just because we're all in the matrix anyway maybe right maybe now Jack White, photographic consultant to the House Select Committee on Assassinations, claimed that there were anomalies in the Zapruder film. He claimed that there was unnatural jerkiness of movement or change of focus in certain frame sequences. Now, in 1996, Kodak product engineer Roland Zavada was asked by the Assassination Records Review Board to evaluate the film. He concluded that there was no detectable evidence of manipulation or image alteration on the film's original version. So you've got two instances. You've got the Warren Commission and you've got the Assassination Committee going back and forth, flipping like a frickin' dolphin making pancakes. But they lost the original, didn't they? No. No, they didn't. Mm-mm. They never gave it back to the. They never gave it back. No, they they ha- So what's available in the National Archives is what they claim is the original. So the confusion but comes the, from the fact that there are some missing frames, and we'll I will get to that in just a second. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say because I know from what I understand they removed a frame for you know the fact that it's pretty graphic. Supposedly, right. I saw it today. They have the film and the frame still there on YouTube. By the way, interesting. No, no, no swears. No. I thought that the no. YouTube one is missing the frame because it's nope. like really graphic. No, it's there. Believe me, it is there. I watched it. She was looking like she was trying to pick up a bag of marbles. Uh, according to Wikipedia, former senior director official uh, at the CIA's National Photographic Interpretation Center, Dino Brigioni, said that he and his team examined the 8mm Zapruder film of the John F. Kennedy assassination the evening of Saturday, t- uh, 23rd of November, 1963, and into the morning of the 24th of November, Sunday, 1963. In 2011 interview with Douglas Horn of Assassination Record Review Board, Brugioni said the Zapruder film in the 
only av- available in the National Archives today has been altered from the version of the film he saw and worked on- with on November 23rd to 24th, to your point. Brugioni recalls seeing a, quote, white cloud of brain matter three or four feet above Kennedy's head and says that this spray lasted for more than one frame of the film. Zapruder film available to the public depicts the fatal headshot on only one frame of the film, frame 313, which is the one that I watched today. Mm, Not fun. Okay, that right there. That right there. 313 because it's seven. You know, no, we're not. I'm where, taking the joke from I'm you because it's seven and it's a prime number. I'm taking I'm, It's the last time we say this joke. It has been running for 45 episodes. 45. That's incredible. I'm going to swear the rest of the time now. <laughs> Nothing but swear words. Take that, you two. Three, 313. Maybe. It's a prime number. Maybe. To your point, maybe. Now, additionally, Brugioni is certain that the set of briefing boards available to the public in the National Archives is not the set that he and his team produced on November 23rd and 24th, 1963. So, this guy, who was there and who did all the stuff, who was a part of it, claims that all this stuff has been manipulated. Do you think that... Okay. Do you think there would be such a big conspiracy theories surrounding this if that film didn't exist because here's the thing they, they i think there's a few others but nothing was as clear as that film right i think that was the only one that was actually filming in well, 1963 right. pretty there hard was, to, yeah so there was not a lot of people expensive out there. at least there was probably more than one person filming but, but, but not nothing in that the right could direction see anything or, right? exactly. so if this guy hadn't been filming, and from my understanding, he's filming from that quote sort of grassy knoll that everyone refers to that they similar see. area, yes, it's like in that it, on the area on the hill. If that didn't exist, would there be as much of a speculation around this at all? Um, no, that's the that's actually the, no. I don't know. So I don't know if I. Uh, I mean, you'd have people there. I think there'd be speculation, but not as people, much. There's people there who say this, that, this, the that. The other film thing. allowed the speculation to go very broad. It right. allowed more doubt to come into something. It's something you can't account for. Yeah. You know, you don't know somebody's going to be filming well, from that direction at that time to get that at instant. Well, I think that the additional problems in affili- association with the Zapruder film is also the fact that the media at the time reported conflicting information. So did all the eyewitnesses. So what ended up happening is a bunch of individuals who were there were interviewed by the media found the weapons, heard the gunshots, all that stuff, claimed certain things that was corroborated by the people there, and then an entity came in after the fact and said, no, 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 no. No, it didn't happen this way. That's where I think the problem comes from. The Zapruder film plays into that, but also, as I said earlier, it's no longer looked at as the focal point of the best option for legitimacy amongst the conspiracy community. Well, think about something like this happening today. You'd have, you'd have thousands of people having, you know, filmed the video on their phones of this. They'd be able to cross-reference every single, single thing under the sun, and you would not have the conspiracies you have now. You would have had some semblance of truth, unless they confiscated all the phones and didn't allow it out, and then they would even be I, there. I would say there would be more conspiracies today because of the, mis- the conflicting information. The reason I say that is because of the amount of nonsense that occurred I'm going to use it forever, my entire life, as the pointing red smoking gun, black smoking gun, wherever you want to say, um, of conspiracy. It was 2020. Yeah, the amount I, I of get what you're conflicting saying there, things. That, that spin. Yeah. Right? So, but, but so the, the videos thing. are there of a building burning down, uh-huh. no matter whether you say it's building burning down or not. We just talked about Now we cause. talk about why, yeah. right? So, it's the same so thing. if you have somebody assassinated from front of you and there's... 5,000 videos of that from every different angle you could possibly see, it would be very easy to come up with the definitive answer of how and why, not why it happened, but how. The why would still be an issue. Yeah. Who would did it? Well, I think know? the only reason the, 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 the only reason the Zapruder film is even looked at reasonably is because of the immediate reaction of how many gunshots were heard and then the conflicting story thereafter from the Warren Commission and then the House Committee. That's the problem. Warren Commission said, well, no, there were three. One of the bullets missed. And one of the bullets went through him and then went into Connolly. And then the House Committee afterwards says, but there were four. What do you do with that information? No, it didn't just go into Connolly. It like 
kind of went ricocheted around him. Yeah, Mm -hmm. like it hit multiple places on him, right? Single bullet theory, right? Um, So the Warren Commission, about on that note, with the thoughts, claimed uh, the shots, claimed that the thoughts are TikTok, uh, claimed that the shots fired that killed Kennedy and wounded Connolly were discharged from a 6.5 millimeter Manlicker Carcano rifle, which is, I believe, Italian, which was owned by Oswald. This contradicts the findings of Deputy Sheriff Eugene Boone and Deputy Constable Seymour Weitzman, who both had initially found the weapon in the Texas School Book Depository and identified it as a 6.5 millimeter Mauser. I looked up those guns, both of those rifles. They are both single action, bolt action rifles, but they are different. Weitzman even signed an affidavit the following day describing the weapon as a 7.65 Mauser bolt action equipped with a 4 and 18th inch scope, a thick leather brownish black sling on it. That's what he stated. And then Deputy Sheriff Roger Craig claimed he saw the 7.65 Mauser stamped on the barrel of the weapon. Dallas District Attorney Henry Wade told the press that the weapon found in the book Depository was a 7.65 Mauser, and the media reported this. Then, investigators later identified the rifle as a 6.5 millimeter Carcano. So there's a lot of conflicting instances there. Now, in The Matrix of Assassination, author Richard Gilbride suggested that both weapons were involved in the assassination and that Dallas Police Captain Will Fritz and Lieutenant J. Carl Day both might have been conspirators. Okay. Mm. Just seems like you you said you weren't sure how that, what was it, the L.A. mayor or whoever said there was like 400 people implicated. Seems like every single person you've mentioned Except JFK himself has been implicated at some point yeah, already. Wouldn't the major twist be that he was, he a, was, he was the at the center of it he all the time? Like, he I, said it all He up. did like a Gone I'm Girl. Not, no, he did like that one movie, the the second, uh, uh, the, the Glass Onion. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he did the Glass Onion. You guys will investigate my death. That's literally what happened. Not really. That's just opinion. I'm only making the joke because this makes me uncomfortable. Now, this leads to the ultimate multiple gunmen theory. Uh, the Warren Commission concluded that three shots were fired from the St- Texas School Book Depository in a time period ranging from approximately 4.8 to in excess of seven seconds. A lot of people who have any experience with firearms and who have any experience with the guns associated with this would dispute that Oswald would have been able to fire three shots in short succession, such as that, since both of those rifles are bolt action, which would suggest multiple gunmen are involved. Now I didn't put this in any of the information that is stored up in my noggin and not on mysterious notes that you cannot see. Uh, But, 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 but apparently there were multiple tests done by the military with those specific guns that actually simulated that you could, in fact, shoot that many bullets with a bolt action if you were someone who had experience with weapons. And Oswald actually was ex-military, and at the time, he was considered, for a period of time within his military tenure, as a sharpshooter. I believe the the marksman score is like 220, so like perfect is 220, or to be considered very proficient as a marksman is 220, and he scored 212. And then later on, he scored a 191, which dropped him a little bit, but still, it's like, he, so you know how to, he knew how to use so it. He had the capability. Supposedly. Um, now... There's also conflicting information, again, on the number of shots. The Warren Commission determined that the preponderance of evidence indicated that three shots were fired. Then, in 1979, the House Select Committee on Assassinations concluded that there were four shots, and one of them originated from the grassy knoll. The Warren Commission, and later the House Select Committee on Assassinations, concluded that one of the shots hit President Kennedy in the back of his neck, exited his throat, and struck Governor Connolly in the back, exited the governor's chest, shattered his right wrist, and implemented itself in his left thigh. This conclusion became known as the single bullet theory. Dang, it's like a Tom and Jerry episode. A little yeah. more violent, though. It's like that one movie, uh, was it Wanted with Angelina Jolie, where like the guy could like curve bullets? Remember that? Remember that movie where he oh, like yeah. could curve bullets? Yes, I do. Oh, that I movie was such that. a cool movie. Like, a curve bullet. Wow. <laughs> so silly. Uh, was it Was it him? And then what was it? Was it, it was uh, the guy that played... Um, uh, the bad guy in um, gosh darn it was it what's his name he was like that bad guy that had all the voices inside of him with uh, um, I think Bruce Willis was in the movie and then Glass Glass yeah it wasn't the bad guy from that the main guy in that movie 
Don't remember. Yeah. Well, it was a long time ago. It shows how old I am. But yeah, uh, a very interesting set of circumstances. Now, Mary Mormon said, not more, not Mormon as in like the religion, Mormon said in a TV interview immediately after the assassination that there were either three or four shots close together, that shots were still being fired after the fatal shot, and that she was in the line of fire. Now, on the day of the assassination, Nellie Connolly was seated in the presidential car next to her husband, Texas Governor John Connolly. In her book, From Love Field, Our Final Hours, she said she believed that her husband was wounded by a bullet separate from the two that hit Kennedy. The Warren Commission concluded that all of the shots fired at President Kennedy came from the sixth floor window at the southeast corner of the Texas School Book Depository. Then, again, in 1979, Warren Commission critic Robert Grodin from House Select Committee on Assassinations publication uh, claimed nearly two dozen suspected firing points in in Dealey Plaza, including but not limited to multiple locations in or on the roof of the Texas School Book Depository, Daltex Building, Dallas Country Records Building, Triple Overpass, Storm Drain located along the north curb of Elm Street, Grassy Knoll. And then Josiah Thompson concluded that the shots fired at the motorcade came from three locations, the Texas School Depository, the Grassy Knoll, and the Daltex Building. This is just getting way complicated. It's so much. Mm-hmm. In, in, Here's the thing: what? Where? Where are all these bullets? Disintegrate where are they? <laughs> like a. Oh, Poof. I, I was about they to make a. Disappear? I was about to make a comparison to something that would have maybe been a little too much. We would have been. We would have been flagged. You can guess what I was going to say. No. Yeah, no, it's okay. You can keep it to yourself. Yeah. Um, uh, no one knows. They probably have them somewhere. Um, now, in March 1965, Harold Feldman wrote that there were 121 witnesses to the assassination listed within the Warren Report, 51 of whom indicated that the shots that killed Kennedy came from the Grassy Knoll, while 32 said the shots originated from the Texas School Book Depository. In 1967, Josiah Thompson examined the statements of 64 witnesses and concluded that 33 of them thought the shots in- emanated from the Grassy Knoll. Now, interestingly enough, Lee Lee Bowers operated a railroad tower that overlooked the parking lot on the north side of the grassy knoll. While interviewed by the Warren Commission in 1964, he reported seeing two men behind the grassy knoll stockyard fence before the shooting. After the shooting, one man remained behind the fence, but Bowers had lost track of the second man. Now in the documentary Rest to Judgment, Bowers claimed he saw either a flash of light or smoke from the knoll, hearing three shots with two in quick succession. So... Yes, that's what happens when you try to cover things up. There's other people that witness it. So, as we've discussed previously on episodes in the past, I am a big fan of Google Earth. So, as you can probably suspect, (laughs) I have... An addiction. I have traced this motorcade's pathway on... uh, In in the... uh, What's it called? Plaza? Dealey. Dealey Plaza. I have sat where the Google car sat many years later, many decades later, and I've looked at that grassy knoll and I've looked at that wooden fence and I've said, is this what happened? I just want to point that out. Wow. And what was your conclusion? That was a truth bomb. My conclusion was, I don't know. (laughs) Neither do we. I don't know. No one seems to know. So let's talk about the conspiracies because that's what this episode is about. We are an hour and 12 minutes in and that is what the episode is going to be about. We've given you an ample background and believe me, believe me, I cut down on the information. There's so much. It's way too much information, on purpose, probably. Now, all of this background brings us to the conspiracies. A lot of this is going to be sourced from one place, because they provided some good information, and it was just easy. Uh, (laughs) Sourced from history.howstuffworks.com, there are a few conspiracy theories that we should discuss. The first one being Jimmy Hoffa. And the mafia. Oh, that guy who's they buried in a cement somewhere in Chicago, right? Isn't he under in the, the metal baseball another, field? Yeah. Another conspiracy yeah. theory. Yeah. So, whole other thing. The Associated Press claimed that purported presidential mistress Judith Campbell Exner claimed that she had arranged a meeting between JFK at his behest and Chicago crime boss Sam Gianciana to jfk so they could receive help during the 1960 not 70 60 presidential race the mafia eventually viewed jfk as his and his brother attorney general robert f kennedy as a problem due to the latter's effort to destroy the mob's influence over the teamsters union jimmy hoffa then at the time teamsters president 
uh, so his attorney, Frank Regano, wrote in his 1994 book that Hoffa asked mob bosses Santos, Tra- Jesus, these names, Traficante and Carlos Marcelo to arrange JFK's assassination. Hoffa then mysteriously disappeared in 1975 and was declared legally dead in 1982. Regano also said in 1987 that a dying Santos Traficante confessed to playing a role in the president's assassination, instead lamenting that They should have, quote, killed Bobby instead. House Select Committee on Assassination Council G. Robert Blakey claimed in 1979, I think the mob did it. Hmm. Hey, we got you in to the office, and now you're not doing what we want. So you're out. We're taking you out. Is that your your mob impersonation there? I wasn't trying to. Do okay, cool. I just saw you, saw you like holding your hands up. I figured. Yeah, I thought you were trying to do. go Italian there. Yeah, for I thought you were no. doing that. I was like, well, now we're really, we're really flagged now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's one option. The second one is Fidel Castro. Good old Fidel, the leader of the not so free. He was pretty pissed. Yeah, he was. So in 1975, it was found that the CIA had tried to assassinate Fidel Castro multiple times during Kennedy's presidency. Lyndon B. Johnson thinks. Castro retaliated. In a 1967 phone call, Johnson revealed to Attorney General Ramsey Clark a rumor that Castro had apparently discovered and captured the plotters, revealing the CIA's involvement. Oswald was involved with pro-Castro activism, even attempting to obtain a visa to visit Cuba the summer prior to JFK's death. How convenient. Uh, And in a 1977 interview, Castro himself said that killing Kennedy would have been absolute insanity because the u.s might have attacked cuba in retaliation now that makes sense yeah he might have wanted to he probably went uh you know what let me call my mob friends instead. well i'm sure we well, remember that came from lyndon b johnson well i'm sure people just sort of grabbed this from the bay of pigs situation well that right? came no but that came that particular one was sourced from lyndon b johnson hmm. now the next one comes from the Bay of Pigs situation. In April 1961, the CIA orchestrated an invasion of Cuba by anti-Castro exiles. Uh, This is the Bay of Pigs invasion, which ultimately failed. JFK decided to keep U.S. bomber aircraft grounded, believing it would indicate obvious U.S. involvement. And surprise, surprise, he would have been right. Many in the exiled community blamed Kennedy after the invasion's failure. In 1963, the federal authorities shut down many of the armed militant training camps and confiscated weaponry. And then in October, just seven weeks before JFK's killing, one anti-Castro militant warned, quote, we're going to give him the works when he gets to Dallas, according to a tape of the meeting in Dallas. An FBI informant apparently claimed a day before the assassination that an anti-Castro activist who was seeking to buy illegal firearms said that his backers would put up the money, quote, as soon as we take care of Kennedy. Can you imagine? They, so they're trying to get rid of Castro every which way but Sunday. Yeah. You know, they're ineffective on all fronts. Nobody thinks maybe they'll try it back. Right. You know, or affiliated parties. Yeah. And in that vein, you would say, oh, Lee Harvey Oswald was likely involved with that conspiracy. Supposedly. If that's the way you want to. Well, I I don't know if anyone doubts of his involvement. Right. right? But I'm just saying like they were hired. Because, you know, he's ex-military with the proficiency you've, you've mentioned. He's he wanted to get into C. Castro, obviously. He spent some time down in Mexico City dealing, talking to Russians because there's documentation on that. He was like an expat. They're, try, they're trying he to figure out how, yeah. how Oswald did there. it in USSR. Yeah, how yeah. he knew for what 37 to do. months. By that's way. that's sort of where this all. Well, that's why. Yeah, from. that's why it's that's why a lot of this and is didn't, like. Didn't he try to kill somebody a few days or a week before this happened? Uh, police officer, a congressman, or police, officer, police officer or something yeah. in Dallas. Yep. Area. So. Now, the next conspiracy is right-wing extremists. On, on November, I almost said October. On November 22nd, the Dallas Morning News greeted JFK with a full-page advertisement that accused him of abandoning the Monroe Doctrine in favor of, quote, the spirit of Moscow. Now, for those of you who enjoy Russian accents, I would love to read this definition of the Monroe Doctrine in Russian accents, so I'm going to. The Monroe Doctrine, a U.S. foreign policy position that opposed European colonialism in the Western Hemisphere, holding that any intervention in political affairs of the Americas by foreign powers was a potentially hostile act against the United States. Give yourself a little congratulations for that accent. It's a cross between you it's know, like Russia and 
and Ukrainian. Maybe, maybe Vlad the Impaler. A little bit. Uh, so now, interestingly, with that ad being taken out in the papers the day, day of, day before, uh, 1967 New Orleans District Attorney Jim Garrison accused local businessman Clay Shaw of being involved in a conspiracy with a shadowy group of right-wingers to assassinate JFK. So, yeah. Over isn't oil, inter- by the isn't way. Isn't it interesting how this district attorney was from New Orleans, which is the same place that they, the uh, the woman earlier went to do some interviews yep. just before she died in her Manhattan apartment. With her husband and son in Sleeping the apartment. nearby. And she died of alcohol and barbiturates. Interesting. Now... There's the other conspiracy, as you brought up a second ago, Beowulf, Oswald in the Soviets. Oswald was discharged from the Marine Corps in 1959, and he promptly defected to the Soviet Union, living there for about 32 months before returning to the United States. Uh, I guess he was disenfranchised or disenchanted with uh, with Soviet Russia at that time, quote unquote. He continued to dabble in pro-communist activism, even going to Mexico City in 1963 to the Soviet and Cuban embassies to get a travel visa. This has caused many to speculate that Oswald was an operative recruited by the Soviets to kill Kennedy. Oswald's final phone call in Mexico City was to an official who was a secret agent of es- uh, in the espionage and assassination branch of the KGB, ironically enough. Now, apparently, apparently, KGB files eventually turned over to President Bill Clinton. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Revealed the Soviets decided against recruiting Oswald. Oswald. He was, quote, mentally unstable and unreliable. They even considered he may have been a CIA spy. So hmm. they're saying he was a spy for the CIA. Which well, is perfect thing to say if you don't want to be accused yourself. Let's keep we in mind. Really want him. Let's keep in mind, and I could be wrong about this, but let's keep in mind who may have been a big part of the KGB at that time. Mr. Putin. Mm-hmm. Mr. Putin? Vladimir, Mr. I ride on the horse with no shirt. He's probably the one that, that gave the information, the KB, KGB files to us to look Maybe. at. Said that. He might have. Who knows? I don't know if he does. He might not be doing too well these days. Yeah, that's what I hear. Unfortunate, because no one wants to die or be sick, even though not the nicest person he's not um, the most popular guy yeah in the world i right just now. yeah i just don't like wishing people ill will um now to many kennedy was an intelligent and wise leader who may have noticed that vietnam vietnam was a potential disaster for american foreign policy and would have likely decided to return home now this talks and specifically is related to the military industrial cons- complex conspiracy Now, many think such a decision as this would have caused issues for the military-industrial complex, a problem that Dwight D. Eisenhower actually had warned Americans about in his farewell speech in 1961. There is, unfortunately, not much evidence that would suggest that Kennedy would have been in direct opposition to the Vietnam police action. General Robert F. Kennedy claimed his brother was convinced the U.S. had had to remain in Vietnam to challenge the spread of communism. So that one... Maybe not the best, Mm. but Kennedy could have been lying. I don't know. Now, there's the other one, Lyndon B. Johnson uh, taking over the presidency with a smile and a wink. In 1964, in an interview with Jacqueline Kennedy, she claimed that JFK was so worried about what LBJ would do if he succeeded him that he'd started to have private conversations with political influencers about preempting LBJ's expected presidential candidacy in 1968. Some believe Lyndon B. Johnson beat JFK to the punch. In 2011, author Joseph Farrell claimed that Johnson acted at the behest of or in tandem with powerful Texas oil men who feared JFK would end the oil depletion allowance, which was their tax break. Some have even claimed that Lyndon B. Johnson tried to get John Connolly and his wife to switch seats with another political couple in the Dallas motorcade on November 22nd. There has been little, if any evidence, though, that Johnson was involved. Where was LBJ from? Dallas. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. Uh, isn't there, the, like you said, that famous photo? Of him smiling and winking? Sm- uh, it's not him. Or is it him it smiling? Is, is him. Someone yes, else is. winking at him. It was him smiling. On and Air Force One when he's vice president. getting sworn in. He's getting sworn in. Yeah. Yes. But with with it's Jackie Im- behind him. Right. It's in front implied of him. In front of him. that. With matter, blood matter on her dress. Some think that JFK wasn't going to have him as his running mate. Is that the implication? Well, the implication was that he was going to yeah stop him from running for presidential 
1968 because that's was speculated that he was going to run for president. Yeah. Mm. And JFK didn't want all of his policies removed or redacted or pushed back. That's why. And Lyndon B. Johnson, he didn't, he, okay, hold on. I'm trying to remember when JFK ran for president, he won the ticket and then he chose Johnson as his running mate. That's what happened, right? Okay. Yes. Okay. In 1960. Yes. He did. So the unspoken monster in the room, the CIA, that is another conspiracy. In 1983, and this is where this comes from, interestingly enough, Rolling Stone published an article about how New Orleans assistant district attorney Edward Gillen had been unexpectedly visited by a man who told him about the wonders of LSD, asking him about the drug's legality and import options. Now, Gillen, being a normal individual supposedly, was confused, later claiming the man was crazy. A few months later, Gillen saw the man again on TV, and it turned out that this was apparently Lee Harvey Oswald. The Rolling Stones article then speculated that while Oswald was serving in the military, the CIA had recruited him to join the Soviet Union as a fake defector in a deep cover operation, the classic 4D chess move. They gave him LSD as a part of the operation, trying to research whether it could be, quote, a truth serum drug, fearing that the Soviets were already using it for interrogations or brainwashing. After JFK and the CIA had a falling out over the Bay of Pigs and his Soviet Union foreign policy, Oswald was activated as the Manchurian candidate to assassinate JFK. Why not? Why not? Drugs. Hmm. Drugs. Triple. Triple. Thripple. Thruple. Thruple. Deep cover. Exactly. Sounds like a adult film. Thruple. Deep cover. Uh, hmm. <laughs> 1975. Uh, yeah. So that's one. And there's, there's a few more conspiracies. These last two ones are kind of meh. They're kind of meh. But, you know, just for the sake of appealing to... Those beliefs, I will talk about them. The Federal Reserve. Some people have claimed that the Federal Reserve had something to do with the assassination. In 1963, JFK issued Executive Order 11110, leading some to believe that this would have taken the Fed's power to allow the U.S. Treasury to bypass it and issue paper currency backed by silver, supposedly eliminating the demand for federal notes, vastly reducing the U.S.'s national debt. Silver certificates, though, apparently already existed. JFK also wanted to get rid of these certificates and had just signed a bill at the time that was passed by Congress allowing the government to melt down its silver reserves and use metal to make coins. Hence the, believe, the American Eagle coins that we like to get. The American Eagle coins? Is that where that comes from? Maybe. I don't know. know. JFK I mean, then... The last year of using silver in coins in the United States, I believe, was 1964. Oh, yes. Due yeah, you're this. right. Yes, you're right. I'm thinking of something else. I'm thinking of the special investment that I've been convinced to do. <laughs> Gold, it's not attached to anything. Uh, JFK issued Executive Order 1110 to make the transition easier, supposedly, allowing the government to print the certificates a while longer. So the feds kind of doesn't really have anything to do with it, but, you know, what you got to do? Maybe they do. Maybe Jimmy Hoffa's the fed leader. I I mean, all these conspiracies are either money or power, right? All of them. Yeah. Who wants the power? Who wants Well, no, this is is power from another place. Yeah, this is is the most plausible. UFOs, aliens, UAPs, extraterrestrials, maps. In early 1963, author William Lester apparently unearthed memorandums through the Freedom of Information Act, revealing that JFK had asked for a review of all intelligent files related to UFOs. This information was sought after as part of a preparation project that he was putting together for joint U.S. slash Soviet space effort that JFK really desperately wanted to initiate. William Lester believed Kennedy was also concerned that Soviets were mistaking UFOs in their airspace as U.S. aircraft. The CIA apparently offed him because of this. That is the final option. You know, what? not that any of these are fun. It's terrible. But also that one's my favorite. UFOs. Yeah, yeah, I think that's that's the most plausible of all of them, right there. Yeah, UFOs conspiring with the Fidel pyramids. Castro. I think the pyramids did it. Vladimir Putin, mm-hmm. perhaps Vlad the Impaler, and Lyndon B. Johnson, all who's, together who's, name on like, one cabal. Name like an, an, a random celebrity, anything one well, that's alive today. Any one of them. Sasha Baron Cohen. Yes, perfect. 
Went back in time. Sasha Baron Cohen. Uh, keys to the castle. Keys to the castle. Ha ha. You're no alive anymore. Like that type of thing where he comes back as Borat and takes out Kennedy and comes back. And it's like, that's actually a true no, there's story. There's a movie in there somewhere. There Borat is. goes back in time. It would be. Well, that's the thing is I think if he ever sees this, Sasha, if you ever see this, please do that. That would be hilarious. Where it was an accident where he, he went back in time and accidentally assassinated the well, president of the United was, States. What was the thing on uh, <laughs> HBO or something not too long ago? There was like a, a one season mini series called 1963. Or yeah, something like yes, that. it was when he went back in time. Yeah, to stop the yeah. assassination. To stop yeah, it, right? That was what's his name? The, not, the guy that that played in the North Korea thing, too. What's his name? Uh, yeah, he was in Spider Man. Um, yeah. Not Tom. No. Not Tom. Uh, he has a brother. Yeah, that, he he was Oswald. They looked just like each Oswald. other. I can't remember his he name. He was Harry, Oswald. His, Harry oh my something, God, Harry Spider-Man, something? that was his name, Oswald. No, right? no, that was no, that was his dad's name. Well, Osborne. Harry Oswald. Osborne. Okay. Yeah, Osborne, he, Oswald. No, no, his dad. I think we have a new conspiracy. No, here. you're getting this so wrong. His right dad there? was Osborne. He was Osborne too. Well, but, he still was Osborne. Okay, well, it's still. Oz, Oz. He he's like one of Oswald. my favorite actors, and I'm not sure the why Wizard I can't remember of, his the name. The Wizard of Oz. He was also in that, I think, too, wasn't in he? Wasn't what? he? Wasn't he like the character Wizard of Oz? Wasn't he? What like... did Dorothy wear in the Wizard of Oz? Oh my God, a red dress. No. Yes. What type of slippers? James Franco. <sighs> James Franco. Ruby slippers. And Dave You're Franco. Of... You're thinking of James Franco. No, that's who James I was thinking of. James Franco. Franco. James Franco. The, Everybody's ignoring all my stuff. because there, it's a never ending, it's, it's never stuff. ending list of dad jokes. That never ends. I think I'm right in, right on the millet. You follow, follow the the yellow brick road right to the answer. Beautiful. That should be our T-shirt. Love a Wizard of Oz. It's a really long one, a little golden path around the shirt, and follow the yellow brick road right to the answer. I'm actually also known as the bull, but the Wizard of Jaws. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just don't, I just don't know. You know, I don't even know. I, I don't even know what to make of any of this, honestly. Like, and the reason I don't know what to make of it is because I prescribed to Occam's razor, and Occam's razor would suggest Something CIA happened. involvement. That's what it Occam's razor would one suggest. It would it suggest does, really CIA does. involvement. And the reason I say that is because it doesn't make any sense that Oswald would be able to operate to such a high degree by himself unless he was somehow coerced or decided to be pushed in a direction. Now, I know I said in the very beginning that we were not going to make any allegations. This is not an allegation. This is just an opinion. And I think that that would be the most likely. Because Fidel, to his defense, even though I don't want to defend someone like that, but I will, in this instance, uh, is right. It would be complete be going, insanity. Yeah, as he was going out the door, he'd have probably said, yeah, we did it a long time ago. Yeah, he'd be like, But he eh, didn't. He's, he's like, are you crazy? There's yeah, no way. That, I would have I, I, okay. live, I live like two minutes from them. So they would have bombed the crap out of me. Let's take a vote. You think, you think that... It's got to be CIA. CIA. What do you think, Bull? I think that that group was involved, but I also think that the the whole mob side of the thing has some some credence to it. They got some serious. You got you got cojones, New Orleans. Though. That's some serious That's they cojones. Did. They all did that to you take the, out the president the of the general. United States. You got the attorney general, the brother of the president, going after all <sighs> these mobsters when the mobsters supposedly assisted in his presidency his candidacy in the first place. I would. And, and he, go, he goes, hey, take care. You. Tell your brother to stop this stuff. I would agree with you on that if the cartel did that to us because they are much more powerful than the mob was. And at the time, I know the mob was huge in the Teamsters side, but right now they are way, way more powerful. What the opinion. cartels you mean? Oh, right yeah. now in Mexico is what you're talking about. Oh, yes. Yeah, they, they run the show down so, there at the border. So, so why why would they upset the apple cart and put more attention on them where the military would come after them? Mm-hmm. They're going to continue to do what they do now because they're kind of being left to do their thing. Kind of. And make a bazillion dollars yeah. doing it. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I would say probably CAA or mob. I, you know what? I'm going to change my position. I'm, I'm going to say either yeah, one I, of those. I, no, either I'm those talking two. about. Maybe together. Yeah. In a very intimate, steamy relationship together at night. I think aliens did it. <laughs> That's my hard I think opinion. So too. They came down and they said, uh, "This ain't it. Yeah, this guy ain't it. He's too good." I don't think they would have said that about him. He's too good. It's popular. 
All right. Enough. <laughs> Get your finger off that dang thing. <laughs> Sorry. I love the, the, the truth bomb. Yeah. I, well, I mean, uh, yeah, I don't really know. I, I think it's just, it's, there's too much, there's just too much. There's too much details. I mean, doing like doing this stuff, this stuff, you got to pick a path doing this stuff. The stuff you gotta, here, you got to pick just, a path. You got to unpack it. You it's just so much. To go for. It's just, there's so much information, and there's so many people that just got up and ran with it, and provided contradicting information, just like with the last three years. And no one knows what to make of anything because everyone has decided to get their grubby little children's finger painting thumbs all over everything. There's just no line of direct correlation to anything. Bottom line is, it seems very obvious and very logical. It just wasn't one maniac that figured it all out and did it. Maybe, but the articles that were released recently say that it still points, supposedly, to Oswald acting alone. Supposedly. But who knows? Oswald was nailing. Do your research out there, guys. Yeah. That's the the, the best thing. Read all 14,000 pages. I dare you. That's a lot. Yeah, that's, that's really it. I mean, that's it. We've talked about JFK. We've talked about him. We This is all we know. And maybe something will be revealed in summer of 2023. Or maybe not. Maybe it won't be. Maybe it'll be pushed off indefinitely. I'll be an old wolf, 90 years old, and President Justin Bieber Jr. (laughs) will be like, yo, guys, what's up? I'm here to talk a little bit more about how JFK dog loves his buttons was like really, really a problem, dude. Okay. Vote for me in 2082. Like, I mean, like, that's, that's, that's what I think will probably happen. But who knows? Mm. But anyway, if you like the show, if you like the episode, you can find our content on Instagram at The Wolf and Bull. And I would be remiss if I did not mention this, but I did not ask you to subscribe earlier. And if you're still here, mm. data and indication and all the aforementioned YouTube suggestions would say that you're committed now. You're part of the family. You're part of the pack. So if you'd like to subscribe, the button is going to be right here. Do it. Right there. You can push it and click it. You can even leave a little like if you want to. Or, or better yet, you can tell us you hated the show. <laughs> Get it. that algorithm I going. I dare you. Do it. Just go ahead. Just go ahead and tell us. But again, if you like the episode, we have new ones every Thursday. And videos of those episodes come out on YouTube and Rumble on Fridays. And that will eventually change. Thank you so much for tuning in. Yes, thanks. That was fun. Anything to add? Sorry, JFK. I'm all done. No more dad do- dad jokes. Ever. No. There will be more prime numbers coming. Oh, great. Well, I promise. on that note, thanks, guys. We will see you next week.